What's up folks and welcome to Indie Ramble. So I've got an interesting new arcade style game for you today and I have to admit this has never been done the way this game does things before, at least not in, in my recollection. And while this falls short in a couple of kind of baffling ways to me, the core concepts of this game are an absolute blast and really wanted to show this off to you. So yes indeed, this is Swordship and well, I don't know why, I keep getting reminded of Spy Hunter when I play this, and really it's nothing like that. It, it really isn't, but maybe it's the perspective and the fast pacing, I'm not sure. So, I'm going to be playing this on beginner because this game is not easy, and on normal, trying to record at the same time, this is going to be a complete disaster. So yeah, we're going to play on beginner here. So, the core idea behind this game is pretty simple. Um, this is a dystopian future where the world has been pretty much flooded and the one percent all live in underwater cities whereas the majority of other people are relegated to these these you know sort of exiled colonies where they're tr just trying to survive and your goal in this is to try to steal supply crates bound for those one percent people and send them to the the people who need them you know you're a robin hood type figure and well, a whole bunch of drones of the 1% are gonna try to stop you. <laughs> and that's basically the idea here. So you see that you are a very much a speedboat. And what you're doing here is trying to dodge the enemies and make them actually destroy each other. And that's a key component of this game. You have no weapons of your own. So your aim here is actually to get the enemies to, to destroy each other by utilizing the various different attacks, which vary significantly, and either dodge them or get them to shoot each other. And based on how you handle that and how daring you are while doing it, not unlike that, that will determine how much you score from them. And then along the way, things like this happen. That's a container. So your objective is to grab the containers when they come in, hold on to it until a delivery point appears, and try to get the delivery done while you avoid the enemies. And that's not always easy. And then when you're done, this is where an interesting scoring mechanic comes in. So you can either, you start with no extra lives and in this game, one hit and you're done. So you have the ability to keep the containers, a certain number of the containers that you pick up for extra lives or you can donate them, which is your ultimate goal, to the survivors, in which case you get more score. So because you don't start with any extra lives, I almost always take those at the beginning. And you get you can get an upgrade from them as well. So this is a good one, delivery points spawn in pairs, or you get fire resistance as well. So you can accept that, and then I'll have extra lives next time. But your real aim is to deliver as many crates as possible to the... Uh, survivor clan that you're trying to get them to here but as i said you're going to need those extra lives because you you get hit once and that's it so and it's very easy to to get hit by something you weren't intending or to accidentally you know miss timing on a dive or something like that and yeah it get it can get really tricky really quick so, you know, and those things have fire attacks, for example, which is really interesting because they don't kill you right away. And if you can dive under the, the water fast enough, you'll actually put the fire out. So if you're really want to, wanting to be daring, sometimes it can be worth your while, you know, hanging out and taking advantage of that to get something else to aim at them. So there you go, I died. Though you do get extra lives, you don't come back where you died. You die, you still got to start the level over again. So... Even with those extra lives, this game is not a pushover by any means. And you saw how easy it was for me to get taken out there. And sometimes when you don't have to, to deliver or pick up every delivery crate in a level, and sometimes you'll have to miss them or it will make more sense to miss them. And you won't get the opportunity for those extra lives or that extra score, but in some cases it's either that or you don't make it out alive. And you have to weigh that, that uh, those costs and benefits and what's cool is that you ha is that it really makes you think on your feet You don't have time to think for the most part in this game as you can see if you're too slow There you go. Now you can quick restart which will take you Just start you right over again and skip all the the post game uh, Statistics and things like that if you want but 
yeah, you, you, there's no continues. You fail, you start over. It's, uh, it's really no pushover. But the core mechanical concepts of this, I just find so cool that you're this, you know, that you, A, you're playing as a speedboat, that B, you can't actually kill any of the enemies, you have to sort of trick them. C, the enemy and environmental variety. There are tons of different enemies in this and you'll further encounter as you get into different cities. And also depending on the weather of the area. So there's a storm going on right now. And if you get caught in one of the lightning strikes, well, guess what? You get stunned, you know? So there was a delivery. I just made it. Just, just, just made it. And you've got to really learn how all the different enemies in the game tick and really learn how to exploit their different attack patterns and abilities to stay alive and score the highest. And it's just... It's it mechanically, I've never played anything like this before, and it's really addictive because game sessions, unless you do really well, are not necessarily super long, and you can you can hit quick restart and you go right back into it right away. And because the games are so quick, you don't have a you know the thing that I've always said is that the best difficult games are the ones that don't make don't give you time to get frustrated. You know, if, if, it, if it's too slow paced a game and once you lose, you have a chance to ruminate on it and grumble and be like, ah, screw this. And then you don't want to come back to it. Whereas this game, because things end so quick, you're just like, you don't even think about it. You just hit the button and you're right back in the action. I, I love games that can nail that. That's hard to do. And this one does it really, really well. Now, you may have heard me say at the beginning that there were a couple of things about this game that I found rather baffling, that can be a detraction from it in some way. So let's talk about those. So, fun as this is, it has a couple of really strange things that I think make it harder than it needs to be in terms of both progression and also a really weird omission in the scoring system. So. As I said, there is progression in this. Most of what it is is unlocking ship variants and some additional abilities and things like that. And you do that by attaining score. The problem with it is that it's not cumulative based experience. And what I mean by that is that each level of the upgrade tree, which I'll show you in a little bit here, the there the cost of future upgrades goes, you know, goes up and up the higher you get as one would expect. The problem is, it's if you have an upgrade, like my next upgrade right now is 20,000. And that's not get 20,000 points over the lifetime of your career in the game. That is, you got to get 20,000 points in a single game. That's not the most easy feat in many cases. And it only goes up from there. So... Unless you practice and practice and practice and get really, really good at this, the later upgrades are going to require a very, very high degree of skill, patience, or luck. Because let's make no mistake about it, there is a lot of RNG in this game. There is a lot of relying on random chance uh, with how this works. So you're either going to have to get really, really good at it, or be willing to take some really big gambles in terms of making some dodgy attacks and dodges and things like that, and hope that they pay off. Uh, otherwise, you're, you might find your progression locked for a really long time, because I'm I'm only at the 20,000 one, and finding it, as you can see here, my score is not going up crazy fast, and I am finding it definitely challenging at times, and to get to that point and this the the full progression tree goes up way higher than that so that's something you you're gonna have to be mindful of is that it um the progression can be very demanding and even when you're playing on the beginner difficulty like this like you've seen like you think my playthroughs aren't lasting long now you should see this on normal difficulty it 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 is it is brutal and i don't have a problem with that i don't have a problem with hard games especially fast-paced hard games like this this has more of that old school arcade feel that i really like because of that and that's not a fault but i do think the progression can be a little bit petty sometimes in terms of what it demands from you and the thing that baffles, and I'm going to say it really annoys me the most as someone who loves arcade-style score attack games, there's no leaderboards in this. 
And I'm not just talking online leaderboards. There's no leaderboards. There's no high score system in this game whatsoever. Score is tied purely to progression. And that, I don't get it. I really don't get that. This game is screaming for a high scoreboard. This game is this game honestly would benefit to such a massive degree from I'm going to say it, take a drink, online leaderboards and replays. Because this has such a high skill ce skill ceiling and it requires so much skill to do really well at it that the replays of this would be amazing to see. And if not that, online leaderboards are just a no-brainer. Now, I will say that I could see one challenge with that, which is that, as I said before, there's a lot of RNG in this game. This is not a game you can memorize. It's not like most arcade shmups where every level plays out exactly the same way, and if you practice long enough, you'll just memorize the ideal way to play it. This doesn't work like that. But... For online leaderboards, maybe they could have like a score attack mode that is preset um, or a, a separate challenge mode even where you have to um, do a certain number of things in a certain time period or, or just do a certain number of things like the maximum number of a certain kind of enemies destroyed or the maximum number of something else. You know, there are ways that you could do it while maintaining the randomness that is obviously very key to this campaign mode. And it, it just baffles me that when you when they clearly put in a lot of time developing this scoring and trick system, which is really, really good, that there's no way to compete on it at all because this game doesn't have this game doesn't have multiplayer. It doesn't have co-op, it doesn't have any kind of competitive multiplayer. This is purely a single player title. And the scoring system in this, which is really well designed, is really just treated as a way to gate off upgrades as opposed to having any kind of competitive element to it. And that's just such a huge miss in my opinion. And, and I think old school, you know, fans of, of older school arcade style games might get turned off a little bit by that. And that's a shame because this game is mechanically brilliantly designed. I really love the way it plays and I, I like the way it looks. Everything has this very sort of flat color cartoony, but not entirely kind of look to it. And I've, you know, I really love the look of it. I love the music. I, I love the fast pace. I love how rock solid it runs. So you can see there, see it just went because I only had like 10% of the score I needed. And indeed, so here's the progression tree. So my next one is 21,000. And you can see it goes all the way up to getting 60 grand in one run. That's a tall order. <laughs> and it's going to require a lot of time investment. And yeah, I just, I, it, that that's the one thing that I think is a real miss. Do I still think this game is good? Absolutely. I think it's a ton of fun. And if you want something that you can play in short bursts, but rewards a lot of practice and a lot of really learning its systems inside and out and exploiting them to your advantage. This ticks all those boxes perfectly. Um, I think they get, they really landed on something here with the, the core design of this, but if you want something that adds replay by adding a lot of scoring potential to it and a lot of competitive potential in that respect, you're not going to get that here. And it's strange because the last game I covered from Thunderful, um, which was that firefighting title, I said something similar, which was that it was actually really cool, but that game lacks some very basic fundamentals that, that could have taken it from good to great. And this is kind of similar. In, it's similar but different in terms of what it's neglecting and the value that that brings to it. Arguably, I would say the, the fundamentals that this game neglects are more important than the ones in Fire Girl. Um, yeah, it's, it's just strange, but I still am having a lot of fun with this, and I highly recommend it. This is something that uh, would be great on something like a Steam Deck. I assume it runs there, given the, the fidelity of it. I'm sure it would run fine on the Steam Deck. Uh, I don't know if this is on the consoles yet. You'll you'll see in the little title pop up as always if it is. Um, but this would be a, a a great game on consoles as well. 
it's uh, it, it's really enjoyable at its core. I just wish it had those few little extra things, and maybe that's something they could add in an update or potentially even a sequel if it does well enough for that. I uh, would certainly like to see that. I would just love to have that long-term competitive ed angle to it that I think could, again, could take this really into the realm of something really, really amazing, as opposed to something that's cool, but you'll always be like, yeah, but just, it's missing just that thing, and it's just, ah, you know what I mean? That's, that's the only thing, and I, it's, but, otherwise, I've been enjoying this a lot, and, uh, you know, I've played it a little bit on my, my lunch breaks here and there, because while it demands practice, it can, is something you can play in short bursts, and it's rare that, you know, I play a lot of modern score attack games that I enjoy a lot, but I haven't seen the many that do things so incredibly different like this one does. And I'll award that, I'll give it credit for that just on its own. It's really, really impressive in that respect. So it's, uh, yeah, I, I do recommend it. I just wish... There's a couple of little things I just wish it had that could have made it just a little bit better. So, yeah, that is Swordship. It is out now. Um, very cool if you want something different. And uh, I hope this does well enough that they can expand upon it or, or give it a sequel and, and really add those little extra steps to greatness in there. So, thank you for mu very much for watching, everybody. I do appreciate it. If you like what you saw here, please do all the usual YouTube things. Like, subscribe, hit that bell. <clears throat> Leave a comment down below. Tell me... What do you think about this? Does this interest you? Are there any other arcade style games like this that are doing things differently that uh, I haven't heard of? Because uh, I would love to hear more about those as well. And as always, you can follow me over at twitch.tv slash pxabstraction for multiple variety streams a week. I cover retro stuff there as well as other indie things that are better suited to streaming than YouTube. We have a fantastic community there and I'd love to see you be a part of it. Thanks again, everybody, and I'll see you on the next Indie Ramble. You folks have yourselves a good one. Take her easy.